Welcome to the fourth installment on MANOVA. This video will be talking more about um, what to do with the assumptions. Um, so there are some assumptions in MANOVA that are particularly unique to MANOVA in, per in particular, so I think that it would be helpful to uh, understand those. Um, I'm not going to go over all of them in great depth, largely because your textbook has checklists and because if you're at MANOVA, you've been doing these outliers and linearity and normality and all of these things all through from ANOVA to ANCOVA and any previous t um, training that you've been doing. But I do want to talk specifically about MANOVA and the issues that are specific um, to MANOVA and the assumptions. Both MANOVA and ANOVA are sensitive to outliers, so you will need to look at Mahalanobis distance with MANOVA for any dependent variables that you have, and make sure that you don't have any outliers on a multivariate level for just your dependent variables. Now, remember Mahalanobis distance does um, continuous variables when you have two, three, four, so you can look at those together with the Mahalanobis distance and find out, um, particularly if you have three or more. Some people would do it and go ahead and do Mahalanobis distance with two variables if you have two DVs, but that's a little less necessary, partly because of this next bullet, which is about linearity. So if you have two DVs, you're going to be looking at linearity at the scatter plot at least and the correlation and kind of get a sense whether the two of them are um, correlated with each other. If they're too highly correlated, we have a concern about multicollinearity. Um, if they're too low, um, well, mostly for that, we're concerned about outliers that might be sitting out there and actually that the problem is an outlier. Um, but we do assume some level of linearity. Um, between the uh, all pairs of DVs. So if you have three DVs, you will need to look at each of them with each other, um, or four DVs or beyond. Um, homogeneity of variance covariance matrices is the most unique um, type that you need to look at for MANOVA. Um, you don't really need it for other previous types of analyses that you've been doing. So this assumption is really important to look at. Now, if you have equal sample sizes, in your MANOVA, the, most people say that this is assumed. You don't really need to check it. Um, it's rare, though, that you have perfectly equal sample sizes unless you kind of force that to happen. So if you have unequal sample sizes and then you also run and find that boxes M is significant, then you'll want to at least report that your robustness is not guaranteed. It's a ding in your research. Some people will go ahead and use Palau's trace instead of Wilkes Lambda as a response to this. This is a very common thing to do to try to be a little bit more conservative since Palau's trace is a little more conservative than um, Wilkes Lambda, but it rarely makes a difference in the actual story of your data, which one of those you use, just for you to be aware how it actually works. Um, multicollinearity, um, I mentioned earlier about the dependent variables not being too highly correlated. So when you look at linearity, um, back on that second bullet point, you want to look at making sure that things are linear and not, um, not a curve or a rainbow or a smile in the data. Um, but if you have super high, so 0.85, um, some people would say 0.8, some people say 0.85, things that are very, very highly correlated, you begin to have problems with the assumptions that you're running and you'll have to, um, you know, really uh, probably pull one of them out and or delete one of the dependent variables or run them separately. This is a picture of linearity. So this one's not too bad. We have uh, what kind of looks like an outlier there, probably even on a univariate level. It looks like we've got one person's salary way higher than everybody else. Maybe that's the manager or the owner of the company. Um, and then everybody else on their salaries, uh, beginning in current salaries. It looks kind of like a hot dog or a blimp. Um, it's not a rainbow, it's not a smile. Um, and those are the things we're particularly caring about um, for this data. This is um, boxes M. So this is the variance covariance matrices being equal to each other and having homogeneity there. If you look there, um, if this was the data that was coming out of your SPSS, you see that it's significant and it's testing this hypothesis. Since it's significant, the most common response is to go ahead and use Palau's trace and just report that equality of the covariance matrices is not guaranteed since you have significance of boxes M. But some people say boxes M is too um, 
too strict, um, particularly if you have a large sample or, or definitely if you have equal sample sizes. So just being aware that this is kind of the best that they have, but it's not an ideal thing. But I'm teaching it to you because SPSS tends to give you that result. Okay, those are the things that are unique to um, MANOVA, kind of the new things on assumptions to make sure that you check. Do make sure you pay close attention, though, to your checklist. Um, the checklist is everything when it comes to um, working on assumptions in MANOVA.